for all of Northern California. This is KOVR 13 News Daybreak. News Channel 9 Daybreak. Now, back to Fox 7 News in the morning. Rebecca Chapa joins us live from Wine Country in Sonoma County, California, with a lesson in Wine 101. Rebecca Chapa is with us. Uh, she's going to talk about entertaining Sonoma style, and she's from the uh, Kenyon Road Winery in Geyserville. We're bringing in one of the big guns to help us out. <laughs> She's up in Northern California, Sinapa, Noma, Mendocino, you name it, she is there, Rebecca Chapa. The problem is that people become intimidated when they talk about wine and food pairing. About 75% of people actually have a fear of choosing the wrong wine. Are you a little overwhelmed when the waiter brings you the wine list at a restaurant? Well, you're not alone. We've got a couple of food and wine pairing tips for you today. Um, they're all available in our wine wallet guide, which is on the website at canyonroadwinery.com. You can pick one up. And it's available on... The our website at canyonroadwinery.com. I've created it with Canyon Road Winery. It's available on the website for free at canyonroadwinery.com. The wine wallet guide is very helpful. It's really small, so you can sneak a peek. The wine wallet guide is available at canyonroadwinery.com, and it's got all sorts of helpful tips about how to throw a party, how many glasses per bottle you'd need, um, how to plan your next event, and all sorts of wine and food pairing suggestions. It's just the perfect time of year to think about wine and food and wine and food pairing, time for celebration. What I like to do is really take a lot of the rules out of wine and food pairing and make sure to have fun with it. But that said, there should be some suggestions that can make things easier for you and make your wine and food pairing experience much more successful. As long as you use a few basic guidelines, like I always try to pair light wines with light foods and heavier wines with heavier foods, we've got paired with a selection of um, cheeses that are a little bit firmer in body, a little bit more hearty, for a little bit more of a full-bodied dish, some lamb kebabs. Um, we paired those with a Shiraz. I like to try to pair light-bodied wines with light-bodied foods and full-bodied wines with full-bodied foods. We have our old friend Cabernet Sauvignon, which we have paired with some no fun body cheeses. Hey, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Thanks for all this information. Thank this you morning. very much. You know, I love wine. I'd love to watch a weekly California wine show. I would definitely watch it, yeah. Definitely. Hi, I'm Brad Hicks. KNTV, the future NBC affiliate for the San Francisco Bay Area, is going to be covering California wine in a way that has never been done before. Every Sunday morning, a half hour devoted exclusively to the wines and wineries and wine lifestyle we've come to love and appreciate. As I've been talking to people about this project, one of the questions that comes up most often is who are we targeting? Well, first of all, this show is not just about a beverage. It is about the entire aspiration lifestyle that wine creates. And the beauty of television is that it allows us, in the way we use words and pictures, to communicate and connect with an entire spectrum of viewers. We can produce a show that, on one hand, is interesting and informative to people who are experienced wine lovers, while at the same time educates and entertains people who don't know much about wine at all. One of the segments we call our Winery of the Week. It's an in-depth look at a different California winery each week. And I'll be hosting the show each week from that featured winery. We hope you'll join KNTV in making this commitment to California wine. What follows now is an example of the kinds of stories and segments you'll see each week on KNTV. Today we're tasting four California sparkling wines with San Francisco wine consultant Rebecca Chapa. We figured with the holidays here you might be trying to pick a special sparkling wine for your celebrations. The wines we're tasting range from $30 to $55. Iron Horse 92 Blanc de Blanc, Domaine Carneros 94 Le Reve Blanc de Blanc, Tramsburg's 97 Blanc de Noir, and from Domaine Chandon, the Etoile Rosé non-vintage. Champagne's a little bit more difficult to taste than some other wines because the aroma is mm. a little bit more subtle. It is, yeah. We start with the recently released 92 Iron Horse Blanc de Blanc, which is 100% Chardonnay. Iron Horse uses state-grown grapes from the cool, foggy region of Sonoma County called the Green Valley near Sebastopol. This one specifically has very special characteristics because it's been aged for about seven years on the yeast. The long aging on the yeast adds a complexity to the wine, and as you can smell, it has a little bit more 
of a toasty mm -hmm. character to it, um, a little bit like baking bread. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so it's you get a little bit of that it's doughy, that, mm -hmm, that yeasty quality. Yeah. But the yeasty aromas and flavors didn't overpower the fruit. We tasted lush, tropical flavors, and we were impressed with the long, rich finish. If you're planning an inaugural party, perhaps this $34 bottle of wine should be on your menu. All the presidents going back to Reagan have served Iron Horse to the Russian heads of state. Next, we uncork Domaine Carneros, 94 Lorev. The winery's Tete de Cuvée, their top of the line, at $55 a bottle. It's made from uh, Chardonnay, 92%, with about 8% Pinot Blanc. Domaine Carneros stretches across the low hills of southern Napa Valley, in the cool Carneros region along Highway 121, where the lingering morning fog and bay breezes help keep some acidity in the grapes, which is important for a top-notch sparkling wine. It too has some of that doughiness mm -hmm. uh, up front that we tasted with the, um, the iron horse. They keep this on the lees, which is the yeast, mm -hmm. for at least five years mm -hmm. before bottling. And that's where that comes before from. Before they squint it. And the mousse, how the bubbles feel in your mouth, is very soft. It doesn't attack your palate. Really complex. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I mean, it's, it's definitely has huge layers of fruit. Mm -hmm. It has that doughy, yeasty quality, but quite bright. Um, citrusy fruit mm -hmm. and then it sort of tones down. It, it changes a lot in your mouth it as does. you taste it. It, it evolves as, as you swallow mm -hmm. this one. And I'm still tasting it mm -hmm. now. It has quite a long evolution. We tasted the early doughy flavors give way to bright lemon and lime and then soften on the finish with ripe pear all in a dramatic interplay. Whereas some sparkling wines with a quick finish are perfect for an aperitif, this wine deserves your fullest attention. Next is our Blanc de Noir selection, the 97 Tramsburg at $30. Blanc de Noir wines are made from red grapes that aren't allowed to have much contact with the skins, which contain the color. Tramsburg in Calistoga was the first to produce Blanc de Noir in California three decades ago, and their experience shows when we compare this wine to other Blanc de Noirs we've had. I'd say this nose is a little bit more restrained, a little bit more refined, not as opulently fruity. We felt there was a wonderful balance between the fruit and the acidity, and we found an interesting surprise. I almost get um, a uh, ruby red grapefruit character from it. Yeah, it, it makes me wonder, is Tangy. it 100% Pinot Noir, or is there some Chardonnay mixed in there? Because it seems to have some white grape flavors. Right, so I believe it's all Pinot Noir, and uh, oh, you know what you're right? There is a little Chardonnay added for complexity. That complexity makes this a wonderful yeah, special yeah, occasion yeah. selection. Our fourth sparkling wine is a rosé, the Domaine Chandon non-vintage Etoile Rosé. I personally am in love with rosé. I think it's coming back. Well, Domaine Chandon adds 5% still Pinot Noir to the Etoile Rosé and ages it on the yeast for three and a half years. Yeah. You can see how much more color it has compared to the Blanc de Noir we just tasted and the difference in the amount of flavor and full mouth feel was stunning. Quite a lot of weight on the palate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't have that lively, um, well, the zing that I called it mm -hmm. before, the lively zing right to it. In it. Yeah, it definitely has quite a lot of intensity mm -hmm. and sort of almost rich cranberry or, or intense red berry fruits. You know, some Raspberry spark almost. Yeah, some sparkling wines you can almost um, drink too fast because they mm -hmm. are so light. Not this one. This one, this you can tell you're serious, drinking wine. Yeah. Yeah. So despite the fact that it's rosé, it's quite a mm -hmm. serious wine. It, it's perfect with food. And you can show you're on to the latest trends by pouring your friends this high-quality pink wine.